Hey, welcome back to Always Broken. Today we're going to be installing a Z-Star motorized um, skylight cellular shades. Uh, kind of a mouthful there. So the problem is, is the uh, instructions are horrendous for this. And it seems like a lot of the reviews say they're very difficult to put up because the instructions are so bad. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. It's pretty straightforward. Most people with a simple drill and uh, a friend can get these up in a pretty quick amount of time. The first thing we gotta do is get this charged. So the motor actually has a battery built in and it's got a uh, USB-C connector right there. So I plug that in with the included charger overnight. That was the drive shaft that fell out. That's okay, they cut those to length for you. They just slip right back in there. So you can see we've got numbers on here. And if you watch the instructions online, it tells you to put these up in the wrong order. So what you actually need to do in order for this to fit in a re recessed um, like hole for your skylight is put the bottom edge on first, click the two sides together onto the top piece and then put the sides with the top piece all up in one fell swoop. That's what you'll need a buddy. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is mount the bottom piece. The bottom piece is the C-channel shape that doesn't have any of the motorized components in it. It's just got a three or four labeled on it. Um, and those are for the left and right sides. They match up with the two uh, rails that have the carrier piece. So I'm gonna peel this off that has the numbers on. It's symmetric, doesn't seem like it really matters. And then what we're going to do is drill the holes. So get that off there, Pull that away. and this has two holes that we're going to have to drill into the wood. If you do have a, a drywall up there, then you'll want to use the anchors. If you don't, if you have wood, you can just go with the screws straight in. So it comes with these packs of screws here. There's this one that's got the two small mounts. I believe that's for hanging the remote. These little uh, set screws, which we don't need to use actually. And then two packs of this stuff that have four screws and four drywall anchors each. So we'll open those, get those ready to go. If you were going to mount this into drywall, what you would need to do is pre-drill a hole for these drywall anchors and Looking at my drill bit case here, it looks like you would use a 7 seconds bit. You drill that in the position you want, and then you drive the anchor in. And then once you run these screws through, it expands the anchor, which grips onto the drywall. In this case, we're not going to need to do that because we're going to be going into wood. So I can just discard all these drywall anchors. I won't need them. What I will need is these screws. So I want to pre-drill the holes for these screws. Sometimes if you just try and run a screw right into wood, it'll split the wood and we don't want to do that. So what I like to do is find a drill bit that is the same size as the smaller diameter, like in between the teeth. So I'll kind of hold it up until I can see the drill behind it. I can tell that that one's 764 is a little too big, so I'll step back down to 3 30 seconds. And this just gives, you know, remove some material so as the screw drives in, it's not pushing the wood apart so far that it can cause it to crack. So I'll take this 3 30 second drill bit, get it ready to go. And then we'll take our piece and we will go ahead and put it up here. So I have this uh, kind of trim up here. I'm just gonna leave it and butt all of my uh, components up against it. If you've got, you know, the windowsill or something else, you'll just wanna make sure that your spacing away from the window is gonna be the same all the way around. So in my case, it's really easy. I can just go ahead and slide this up here, push it up against the wood trim, and that's where my holes will be. 
So I'll go ahead and do that now. I just did that to kind of mark the holes. Take this piece out. I'll just hold up a bag so I don't make as big of a mess. And go ahead and drill them deep enough for the screw. take this piece and now that I got those holes drilled I'm gonna just run these screws in by hand some people could use a drill but I always find that you end up stripping things out and why not if you use the drill to bring the screws in because it's hard to tell when you reach the bottom of the hole so I'm just gonna do this by hand come over here to the other side okay the next thing we got to do is put the two side pieces up along with the motorized unit and the curtain um, but the problem is is what they want us to do according to the instructions is secure the solar panel somewhere to this plate now when I line it up in my case I have the wood trim up there so I need to offset from this edge to this edge so that there's a space for the wood to go. And then you look at where I can screw these holes. And if you look at the end, it's lining up with where the fabric mounts. So that's not gonna work for me. Um, I, I looked at some other solutions to try and uh, secure it better, but honestly, I can't come up with much, much better than double-sided tape right now. So I'm gonna double-side tape this on. Um, if your window allowed you to mount this up in a separate location and then plug it in later maybe that would work but for me i'm going to offset it from this top edge and double side it tape it into place i'm also going to need to drill a hole to pass this cable through because if you wrap it around the end it's going to interfere with the side rail and so i'll i'll drill a hole now that it's wide enough to fit this plug through and then double side tape the uh solar panel on so we'll do that now. Okay, so we know that this top piece is gonna overlap by, you know, half inch or so. And I want the cable to be kind of stretched out so it doesn't get as caught up in the, the motor shaft. So I'm gonna try and target somewhere around right here to drill the hole. I'm gonna start with a small bit to kind of get the position where I want it. I'm just gonna eyeball this, go about halfway between here and the drive shaft, and then just drill a hole. Okay, I got my pilot hole, now I'll do the half inch hole. With my step bit. You don't need to use a step bit if you have a half inch drill bit, that would work just fine too. I'm going to that one. Looks like that might contact the edge here. So I'm gonna flip it over and go from this side just to be sure I don't hit the top part of my bit into the piece I don't wanna drill. Sweet, okay, so that fits. It looks like looks like seven sixteenths was all we needed to get that to fit. One trick if you're using a step bit, now I've kind of got some burrs on this side. But because the bit has those chamfer lead-ins, if you just touch it up just a second, 
and just get the edge of the, the neck size hole in there, it will help clean up some of these burrs. Okay, I got some double sided tape adhered to the back of the uh, solar panel. I'm gonna go ahead and stick that on here. Yeah, see, I don't wanna to be too close to the edge because it's gonna overlap the side rail. So I'll come off maybe three quarters of an inch. I wanna leave my gap at the top for the trim and I will try and place it maybe right about there. Again, this is gonna kind of depend on your situation and if you have a trim piece right here or not. If you don't have a trim piece there, you could probably move this up a little higher. So I'll push that on nice and firmly. Okay, so that's stuck on there. We got the cable that is routed through the hole we just drilled. It comes on to the inside and is plugged in to the motor. I will uh, wind this cable up a little bit so that it doesn't get caught up in the drive shaft and then we'll be ready to put it together. I zip tied the cable kind of tightly, I doubled it back on itself and then used two zip ties and sort of pulled it tight. And then it's plugged into the uh, motor, which has a built-in battery. And now it's all nice and tight up and out of the way. So we can go ahead and assemble this. Okay, so now we're going to match up the one on the side rail over here with the one right there, and the two on the side rail here with the two right there. And the reason you want to not switch these up is because as you move the carriages up and down, these are geared opposite so that when this thing turns one direction, it lowers it and raises it. So you need to make sure that you match the numbers there. Now this part's going to be kind of tricky because not only do we got to fit the end of the motor into the side rail, but we also got to fit the bottom, the part that extends and contracts the fabric onto this L shape right here so that it moves up and down as this uh, belt drive is turned by the motor. So let's just start on one side here. You line up the shaft with the center hole. Oh, first of all, you want to put this bracket all the way to the top position. And we will push until it snaps into place. Now the motor is locked in, the shaft is locked in, and it's fit all nice and tight in between. Okay, now the next thing we we'll want to do is slide the end of this metal piece over that L bracket. Okay, that fits into place. And now we'll put the top assembly, or the, this side rail, on the other side. So again, we get the uh, drive shaft into the hole there. We make sure this is pushed all the way up first. And now the tricky part here is that we're going to need to also align this bracket as we're pushing it together. because we ought to be able to capture it all at the same time. Okay, get that L bracket in before you fully seat it. And now it's all tucked together. So the hard part there was that this needs to fit underneath that piece, underneath that piece, and around that piece. So it all kind of has to go together like a puzzle at the same time why I was fighting you a little bit. But now it's all put together. So you can see we've got it all attached down here. We've got it all attached up here and we can even test this. If I were to hit the down button on the remote. You can see it's driving down. To stop it, you hit the middle button with the line and then press the arrow the other way for it to come back up. Okay, we verified that all worked. 
So that's looking good. And the final thing will be to put this up and secure it to the windowsill or to the skylight sill. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this assembly and put the bottom ends into that bracket we mounted already. Kind of get them started there on the edges and then push the assembly up into place. <laughs> Okay, this is where you're going to need friends. So you can see that these are tucked in to that piece. We got it pushed all the way up to the top here. The motor is facing down. And now we're going to need to mark the holes on the side. There's two holes on either side that are pre-drilled. And we'll, this is where we'll use a friend to take a Sharpie and mark those holes. Okay, I wasn't able to reach the Sharpie through those holes, so what I ended up doing was, was what I did on the first one, which is where I used the drill bit itself. So I was able to make the marks up there, just going through the holes that are already built in um, and making a little mark here, and now I can finish drilling them. Okay, so we got those holes, those pilot holes drilled. It was the same size as before when we went and put the lower piece on. We're gonna throw this thing up for the last time and put the screws in it and get it securely mounted in place. Okay, and I just fit the ends in. Just like kind of fighting me a little bit. I just need it to fit all the way within this C channel here at the bottom so you can kind of bend it open to get it down far enough. I can get this all the way up into place, push it up against the edge again, so it matches up with the holes where we had before, and got the screws and screwdriver in my pocket, I'll get those started. Okay, now that we've got this thing mounted up, one thing we can do is adjust the speed at which it goes up and down. So if I press the button right now, you can see pretty slow. But to make it go faster, there's a little button, a reset button up here next to the charge port. You can take a screw and push and hold, and you hold it down until it cycles three times. So there's one time, two times, three times and I can stop pressing the button. And now when I press like up, for instance, you can see it's moving much faster. The remote seems to be pretty well paired from the factory. However, the instructions are really confusing. So in order to switch the buttons, like right now, if I press the down, it goes up and I want it to go the other direction. So what you do is you push on this left arrow so that it says the one, because everything's programmed to one from the factory. You take the battery cover off and you hold down this button on the right, it's called P2, until the curtain moves and starts beeping at you. Now you push and hold the stop button in the middle here until it does one more cycle. Now when I push up, it starts to open. You push down, it closes. So we just reversed the channels. Okay, the last thing we got to do is put the uh, trim cover on. Now it's kind of stupid, they don't really give you any way to mount this, but the way it fits in is the side with the longer bracket goes up and behind the uh, motor assembly. So mine is kind of a tight fit. So kind of to pull down sort of force it up into place. And when I do that, it actually stays up pretty well. Now in the um, instructions, they want you to take a screw and kind of drill through at an angle and catch a screw just into the uh, wall here. Um, mine seems to be tight enough or I'm not worried about it falling, so I think I'm just gonna let it be like that. Um, but if yours doesn't stay fastened, take that pilot drill 
drill a hole through the metal into the wood and then run a screw through just to secure it in place. But that pretty much covers it. I think now we are concluded on this project. And uh, yeah, hopefully that made it straightforward for you. Thanks for watching this time on Always Broken. If you liked this or it helped you out, please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.